Hi friends, it's good to see you today. I hope that you have received our last two Monday emails uh, concerning the weekly rhythm. The new one came out yesterday, and if you didn't get it, that means that you are not part of our email group in the church. Uh, there's really an easy way to rectify that. You can email Melindy West at church office at blackwaterumc.org. You can go on our website at blackwaterumc.org, and right there on the homepage, you'll see a place to sign up, and you'll be included in all the future emails. Or you can call the church office at 225-261-4646 and Melindy West will absolutely add your email address to our data bank. Um, that way you won't miss a thing, especially while we are apart. But today I want to look at the scripture that was mailed out in that weekly rhythm yesterday. And this comes from John 11 uh, verses 1 through 45. And it's concerning the raising of Lazarus. But let me say this. So while he did, while Jesus did perform that miracle, really when you look at that text overall from the first through the 45th verses, you'll come to see that um, there's only a, a couple of verses that really speak to the raising of Lazarus. And that comes in verses 43 and 44. Jesus cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. You see, Lazarus was in a tomb, and he had been there for multiple days. And of course, everyone that was standing around watching this unfold would have never believed that Lazarus would actually come out of that tomb, but he did. The scriptures go on. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. In many of our Bibles, both online and in print version, there are many times uh, titles that are given in different blocks of scripture passages. And in this particular uh, case, a lot of Bibles have above the beginning of chapter one, it's called the, the raising of Lazarus. But again, um, there's only a couple of verses that truly speak to the actual raising. And what I've come to, to see is that Jesus, yes, performed this miracle, but he did it for a greater purpose a bigger purpose than simply bringing a dead man back to life. Let's look at the ways that he spoke to three different segments of people that you see in that passage. To his disciples, those ones who traveled with him from city to town and back and forth as he proclaimed the good news, this is what Jesus said to that group uh, concerning these verses. This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad that I was not there, so that you may believe. Then we hear him speaking some words to Martha, a sister, a sister of Lazarus, also of Mary, but he's speaking here to, to Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? And then finally, there, uh, there were some uh, Jewish population, some Jew, Jewish people that were standing around this burial site watching all this unfold. And this is what Jesus says concerning them. Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe. You see, the bulk of the story focuses not so much on the raising of Lazarus himself, but how one is invited to respond with trust and by faith um, all through the glory of God. You see, Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead not because he himself was sad, although he was. Um, that scripture tells us in, in just two words, Jesus wept. 
but rather he, ra he raised Lazarus from life for a bigger purpose. Jesus raised Lazarus from uh, the dead, not because Mary and Martha were so upset, his sisters, although they were, they were very, and of course Jesus wanted to attend um, to their heartache and their grief. But again, Jesus uh, raised Lazarus from the dead for bigger and grander purposes. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, not because there was more for Lazarus to do, although I'm sure he did um, as he uh, regained his life and as he would give that testimony uh, to other people um, until the day he died, I'm certain. Yes, he would do that, but that's still not really why Jesus uh, raised him to life, not only for that reason. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead for godly purposes, with eternal intentions, for the sake of the human family, both in that day and today, right now. Because this is an invitation for us who believe, as well as it is an invitation for those who have not, not yet come into a living faith in the person of Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus grabbed hold of this opportunity to share the truth that he was indeed the son of the almighty God. And he was the one that would offer people, all people of the world, abundant life both here and now in their day, as well as in to eternity, into that everlasting life that we're told uh, that is really there from the scriptures. Jesus took this occasion to reveal the glory of God in a big way. He took this occasion of death and heartache and turns it into an occasion of light and life. That's what Jesus does for anyone who says yes to him. The Apostle Paul uh, speaks about this glory of God uh, in a way that I love in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. All of us with unveiled faces seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one glory to another, from one degree of glory to another. That is one of the beautiful promises that we are given when we come to a living faith in the person of Jesus Christ. So I wanna ask you this question. Have you ever pondered, or I'll say how intentionally have you pondered, how the glory of God that's come through Christ has changed and transformed your life? Have you ever thought about how your story has unfolded from the first time that uh, you came into, a, into a, a, a vibrant living relationship with God in the person of Jesus? You know, we need to know those stories because it is our roles to now, um, as ones who God's glory lives in and shines through, to go out and share that with the world. Long ago in a little town of Bethany, our Lord took this occasion to turn darkness to light, to turn death into life. And Jesus continues to do that work in us and through us and for all people who will say yes to him. And sometimes that might be from having a miraculous recovery from an illness that you were sure of certain death of that moment. But you know, death comes in many ways. We, we continue to die um, by addiction. We continue to die by our egos and by hard hearts. We continue to die when we are hoarding our treasures instead of sharing them with the world. We die by uh, only thinking of ourselves, looking to ourselves. We die by giving God perhaps a nod and a wink sometimes or even just on Sunday mornings, but never truly sitting and enjoying his company. I want us not only the people of Blackwater, but for all Christians to be those people that intentionally look for ways to reveal God's glory, that glory that lives in us through faith, 
I want us to share that with the world in all the ways we can. That's my prayer for you today. And I pray that you will contemplate uh, these words that I have shared. I hope that you will go back to that scripture and read it slowly and that you would read it with a meditative heart, maybe even journal about it to see what God is perhaps calling you to as a result of engaging him through his word. And now it would give me joy and blessing and honor to pray for you um, as we go to God now in prayer. Would you bow with me? Holy God, we come before you and we first thank you for your son, Jesus, the one in whom would always point to you in every act he did, in the miracles that he performed. Lord, when people wanted to give him all the praise and glories, he all glory, he always pointed to you. God, if we are made in your image, which includes Jesus, of course, then we know that we too are ones that allow glory to have its way with us and then to point to you, showing people who you are, telling people about the love and the compassion and the mercy that you have for this world. Lord, reveal to us who we can share your glory with today and in all the days that are before us. Lord, when we get that nudge, when we get that small voice that speaks to our heart, give us the trust, give us the courage to act on that and not beat people over the head, but rather invite them to a world and to an experience and to a real living relationship that they can't even imagine. Lord God, we love you. We praise you. We offer to you our thanks and our gratitude. And we do so in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Have a great rest of your evening.